Joining me now, Democratic strategist Jessica Deloach. Jessica, thanks for being here. Thank you, Liz, for having me on your show. It's great to have you here. Jessica, let's start with this question of the day today. And as I said in the introduction, you know, this is the third day now of hearings, confirmation hearings for Judge Neil Gorsuch in the Senate. His answers have been fairly bipartisan, in my opinion. He has refused to answer hypothetical questions about some of the hot button issues of the day. But I guess it boils down to this, Jessica. My question is, if a judge like Gorsuch can't get bipartisan support in the Senate, and it's looking like Democrats aren't going to vote for him, can anyone well, that's a fair question. I would say that you have to dig a little deeper in this issue. And, and one of the biggest points that the Democrats are trying to make, which is what I would say their primary, primary point is, is that they're still upset about the games that Republicans played when it came to the nomination of Merrick Garland under President Obama. He wasn't even given a chance to have a hearing. President Obama still had 10 months left in his term and the seat remained unfilled because there was, an op there was a possibility that a Republican would have been elected to the White House, and that's exactly what happened. So the seat was open for 10 right. months. Donald has only been in office for three months, roughly three months. And so you can understand why Democrats are still a little bit sour about no, this. No, I, I do understand. I do understand. I'm sure I'd feel the same way if I were in the reverse position here. But I don't know. I don't know if that, uh, if that frustration or if that aggravation, if that delegitimizes Judge Gorsuch. I mean, does that aggravation that Merrick Garland wasn't confirmed, does that somehow make Judge Gorsuch an unfit Supreme Court justice? You know, I certainly wouldn't say so. I think the only thing you can ever do with any nominee to any court is to judge them by their record. There are Democrats who have legit claims about whether or not he can actually be an advocate for workers, an advocate for, for minorities the way that he says he is. They can only refer to his record. As you've seen, they've, they've definitely shown some concern about uh, reproductive rights and a woman's right to choose what to do with her own body. Uh, but that's all based on a book that he wrote about euthanasia, not right. necessarily a ruling about Roe v. Wade. No, now, and in, in fact, if, if you don't mind my interjecting just for a moment, yeah. yesterday in the second day of hearings, he did address Roe v. Wade directly. He said, like I said in the introduction to the show, uh, he said, Gorsuch said, if President Trump or any president were to ask him to overturn a certain case, and he used Roe v. Wade as an example, he said he would walk out of the room because that was inappropriate. When asked by Senator Feinstein what he would do, you know, when she made her super precedent comment, he said it's been reaffirmed many times. So he did talk about his personal opinion on the dignity of life when it came to euthanasia. But when it comes to the precedent of the law, that's the job of, this, of a Supreme Court justice is to interpret and apply the law as it's written, not to write new law. Sure. And I think that him saying that will go a long way with people on both sides of the aisle. What this really just comes back to is that the Democrats are taking an opportunity, and, and, and I would say they're right for doing this, to show how this nomination was, it's a stolen Supreme Court seat in their opinion. It's a massive power grab by the Republican Party. And I think that the Republican Party would have argued the exact same thing had the shoe been on the other foot. They are just trying to basically associate Gorsuch with this power grab because the Democrats don't trust President Trump. They don't trust the GOP. And they've been given, given several reasons for why they shouldn't trust this administration. So they're now tying the Supreme Court nominee to that. It will be up to Gorsuch in the future to just to, to show voters, to show the American people what kind of justice he would be. And he can only do that through his record. Right now, the Democrats right. are just doing what they're expected to do. And that's to vet this person and to ask every question that they possibly have. Right. And that is their responsibility. And going back to just another point, I don't doubt that Republicans would make the same fuss if they were in a similar situation. I will concede that point uh, wholly here. But to base, to base their questions or to base their opinion of Gorsuch, Democrats' opinion of Gorsuch, on the fact that they don't like President Trump, to say that they may vote not a single Democrat to support him, even though they've unanimously confirmed him to a federal judgeship before, isn't that the same type of obstructionism that the Democrats accused the GOP of for the entire eight years of President Obama's presidency? It is certainly easy to classify that as obstructionism. I think that there are some legit reasons for the way Democrats are behaving right now. One of those reasons being, hey, if your president is being investigated for his ties to Russia and what, uh, what role they may have played in our most recent election cycle, there are some people who are rightfully uncomfortable with him having anything to do with 
nominating someone to the Supreme Court at this point in time. They think that there are more important things to face, and this wouldn't be one of them if our president would be under investigation. Right, even even though we found out just the, the last day or two in the Comey hearings that no vote counts were impacted in any way by Russian meddling. The Russian meddling has happened before, and we at this point, just for my viewers' information, have no evidence that President Trump knew about that or wasn't involved. And on both sides of the aisle, Jessica, I don't think anyone uh, anyone is saying that Russia didn't meddle the, in the election. Everyone uh, acknowledges that that was the case and that it was an attack on our democracy and not appropriate. But going back just to the uh, the illegitimacy, this is the argument that I think Democrats are using in a lot of respects when it comes to everything that President Trump has done since January 20th. And But coming, coming back just to Merrick Garland for a second, and the fact that Gorsuch, the argument that Gorsuch shouldn't be confirmed because Merrick Garland was not in our Constitution, the phrasing, the exact words, is that the president nominates a justice for the Supreme Court with, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate. So it wasn't an unconstitutional move. They do have an active role to play in confirming this. It's not a rubber stamp on a president's nomination, which we've seen not just in this situation, not just with President Obama. I mean, we saw it with George Bush as well. The Senate does play an active role in helping choose. And if they chose not to advise on Merrick Garland or not to consent to him, that is well within their right. It is. And, and that just goes to show you how important it is to maintain power in, in the Senate, in the House, too, in, in your executive branch. You have to have those numbers, because if you don't, ultimately, this is the kind of thing that transpires. And so your initial question about is it even possible to get a nominee onto the Supreme Court if you don't have a significant majority where it counts? Is this how it's going to be forever? Maybe. I mean, this is the precedent that we're seeing now. This is what's playing out. I think at the end of the day, what people care about the most is just what the direction of our country is as we move through these next few decades, because your Supreme Court has a significant role in that development of our nation. And that's why everyone is very concerned right now. So I think that there's, there's good intention under it all. It's right. just a matter of ideology and how we right. get no, to I th it. No, I think you're absolutely right. I think it is a philosophical difference. And perhaps now more than uh, ever before in the history of our country, we're seeing that divide by party line, that difference in believing that the Constitution is a set document that should be interpreted just based on its text versus this idea of a living document. And I think that's why it's so divided along party lines right now. Jessica, we're out of time, but thank you so much for being here today.